OK, so we've met parametric equations before. Um, so parametric equations, if you remember, was when instead of having a Cartesian equation, which is an equation that has x's and y's, it's just one equation. So for example, uh, x squared plus y squared equals 9, or um, y equals 2x um, squared, or something like that. These are Cartesian equations. Okay, so they are individual equations um, that include x's and y's. Okay, um, and that defines the curve. Parametric equations are another way of defining curves um, where instead of having them as one single equation, you have the x and y parts of the equation um, written in terms of a parameter, which could be t, for example. So you might have one equation written as x equals 3t squared and y equals 2t minus 5. Okay? Now, t could be uh, representative of time, for example. And so what you're looking at is how the coordinates are changing with respect to time. So as time moves on, the particle uh, is given by its coordinates x and y. So when uh, t equals 0, initially, for example, we would be at 0 minus 5. Okay? And then as time goes on, the particle will move governed by those equations. So these would be referred to as parametric equations. Now, we looked at parametric curves, and you could have all sorts of different shapes appearing, not just ones that we're used to, but parametric equations can give rise to loops, for example, and some quite peculiar behavior. And what we want to do is to be able to find, say, the gradient at a particular point of one of these curves, or the equation of a tangent, or the equation of a normal to one of these curves. And in order to do that, I would have to find some way of finding the gradient function. Okay, So that is the job that is left to me. So how are we going to do that? Because in general, we have x being written as some function of t, and y being written as some function of t. So how can I get to dy by dx? Now, you might be thinking, well, if I could turn it into a Cartesian equation, then what I would be able to get from that is that regardless of what format I've got it in, I now have implicit differentiation, which will allow me to differentiate to find dy by dx. Okay? However, we know from experience that not all parametric equations can be converted into Cartesian form. Okay? So that way, although it will work, won't work for all cases. So we must find another way. Now, the way that works actually uses something we've seen before, the chain rule. So dy by dx, we know from the chain rule, can be looked at and used as a product of two derivatives. And in this case, seeing as the only other uh, variable that I have is the t, could I somehow write it like that? So dy by dt times dt by dx. And this is how we use parametric differentiation. We actually use the chain rule to do it. So, for example, as a brief example of this, 
let's say x is equal to 3t squared and y is equal to 6t minus 5. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, well, as we initially thought, could I find um, a Cartesian equation for this and then differentiate that? Okay. Well, in this case, yes, you can. So let's try that out first and let's make sure that we can get to the same answer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and I'm going to rearrange that second equation to get t equals and it'll be one sixth of y plus 5. And then I would substitute that into the first equation. So x is equal to three lots of this squared. So 1 over 36 y plus 5 squared. So 3 over 36 is 1 over 12. So there is the Cartesian equation. I could then use um, implicit differentiation to find dy by dx. So differentiating the left-hand side with respect to x and differentiating the right-hand side with respect to x. Okay, now differentiating the left-hand side is just 1. Differentiating the right-hand side, I'm going to get uh, 1 twelfth times by the derivative of what's inside, which is dy by dx, times by y plus 5, Oh, sorry, the uh, 2 would also come down the front, times y plus 5 to the 1. Okay, so I've got 1 twelfth and times 2, which is 1 sixth. Multiply both sides by 6, so we're going to get y plus 5 dy by dx. So dy by dx is 6 over y plus 5. Okay. Now, you could then write, uh, put the y back in, and you could write it in terms of t, if you like, in terms of the parameter, which might be useful. So when y is put back in, that's 6t minus 5. The 5s cancel, the 6s cancel, and I'd get left with 1 over t. Okay. So that would be the process from what we've already known, what we already know. Now if we used parametric differentiation, let's try that. So I'm going to need to differentiate x with respect to t, so dx by dt is 6t, dy by dt is 6, so dy by dx is dy by dt times by dt by dx, which is 1 over dx by dt, so 1 over 6t. The 6 is cancel, and I get left with 1 over t. Now, can you see how much easier that was compared with that? And this was a basic example. Okay, So, although the methodology that we have previously, that we've built up, works for some cases, did in this case, doesn't always, because we can't always get into that Cartesian form. But in the end, the parametric differentiation using the chain rule is a lot quicker and easier to employ.